we will try to find the nature of the critical point, whether it's a set of point or relative max or relative min. Uh, now, I did another video uh, right before this, uh, which actually computed the uh, critical point of this. So I'm going to do, do it here, but I'm going to do it rather quickly. If you can't follow the logic, then try to uh, look at that video. So if you differentiate this by x, then uh, it's a nested function where negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y is like the nested function. And uh, using nest, if you differentiate anything with a nested function, you should use a chain rule, which means the thing that's inside must be pulled out. And you have to differentiate this, where uh, right now this derivative is differentiation by x because we're doing the partial with respect to x, which means that y squared and 4y are considered as constants. So that just leaves you with uh, e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y times uh, negative 2x. This is a constant, so that goes away. Negative 2x, which gives you negative 2, and then 4y is a constant that goes away. Okay, in the similar way, if you differentiate by y, this part will stay the same, whereas uh, this one will now be differentiating by y instead of x, so uh, we will get negative 2y from here. This will be differentiating to 0, this will be differentiating to 0 because you're doing a partial derivative of y. Uh, so the only thing that creates a non-zero term will be negative y squared giving you negative 2y and 4y giving you 4. Okay, now what are we looking for? We want to know the critical numbers, critical points where it means that both derivatives vanish. Now, because exponents can never be 0, this means it's 0 only when negative 2x minus 2 is 0, which means you get x equals negative 1. In our case, it's the same story. Negative 2y plus 4 has to be 0, which means y has to be 2. Now, because uh, a critical point is that gradient of f equal to 0, it means that both of these have to be 0, which means uh, x has to be negative 1 and y has to be 2, which means negative 1, 2 is the only critical point. Okay, so what do we do afterwards? Once we identify the critical point, then we are going to figure out what the nature of this point is uh, by using the Hessian. Uh, the Hessian is defined as the matrix of all the possible second derivatives. You can differentiate by x and then x, and then you can differentiate by x and then at y, or you can differentiate by y and then x, or you can differentiate by y twice. And uh, since we need to evaluate this, and actually we have to evaluate this at this critical point, so uh, we really need to know uh, fxx, and then we have to evaluate it at negative 1, 2. Okay, so let's see. To get this, you have to take this one, which is already differentiated by x, and differentiate by x again. Now, the thing that you have to be careful here is that this is a function of x, and that's also a function of x, so you need to use the product rule because these are multiplied which means I have to differentiate this first, which will create another one of this. So it's going to be like e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y. And then there is going to be negative 2x minus 2, which is squared. And then plus e to the negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y. And then uh, the second part you have to differentiate, which is negative 2. Uh, let's simplify this. Uh, you have, well, you know what? We just have to evaluate this at negative 1, 2, right? So let's figure out what what this is going to be when x is negative 1. So e to the negative of negative 1 squared minus, and y is 2. 2 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4 times 2, which is uh, e to the negative 1 minus 4, that's negative 5, plus 2, plus 8, 
8 plus 2 is 10, 10 minus 5 is 5, so e to the 5, that's what you get for this. And then when you plug in negative 1 in here, uh, that's going to be, oh, that's going to be 0. Negative 2 times negative 1, that's positive 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So the only thing that you get at the end of the day would be that uh, fxx evaluated at negative 1, 2 would be, uh, you, you just have this as the only non-zero thing, which is e to the 5 times negative 2, or negative 2 times e to the 5. Okay, great. Now we have to proceed to find uh, fyy and fxy. Uh, let's do y, fyy first. So if you differentiate this once by y, we did the calculation a moment ago. It's going to bring down uh, this thing and differentiate by y, so it's going to be negative 2y plus 4. But what we are trying to do is we're trying to differentiate this again by y, which is again the product rule, so uh, this will be differentiated first, which will create this squared and then uh, plus, then we have to differentiate this. And then negative 2. Again, if you plug in negative 1 comma 2, this will be e to the 5. When you plug in 2 here, because, uh, see, uh, y is 2, so this, this y would be 2, but 2 times 2 is negative 2 is negative 4, so this is going to be 0 if you plug in uh, this 2 in here. So, uh, And then we know that this will be e to the 5 and negative 2. So again, fyy will also be e to the 5 times negative 2. Okay. On the other hand, if you differentiate by x and then y, which is the same thing as differentiate by y and then x, uh, second partials commute. That means you can just differentiate this by x. Now if you differentiate by x, this part is just a constant. So uh, it's treated as a constant if you are doing partial with respect to x. And therefore when you differentiate this by x, it's going to bring down a, some factor that we already know. which is uh, negative 2x coming from differentiating negative x squared and another one coming from differentiating negative 2x, which is negative 2. So in this case, if you evaluate at negative 1, 2, when you plug in negative 1 here, it's going to be positive 2 minus 2. So it's going to be 0. OK, so what does that mean? All this, uh, everything here means that the Hessian would be negative 2 e to the 5, 0, 0, negative 2 e to the 5. And that allows me to calculate the determinant of the Hessian, which is a d minus b c, which is negative 2 times negative 2 is positive two, 4. e to the 5 times e to the 5 is e to the 10. OK, since this is positive, that means it's, a, it's either relative max or relative min. So which is it? Which is it? Well, uh, to determine this, now you have to use this, this diagram. Uh, if the second derivative is positive, then it will be a minimum because the uh, center of the smiling face is lower than the other ones, right? And then if you have frowning face, if the second derivative is, sec uh, is negative, then at the middle, you have a maximum, OK? So we look at fxx, which is negative 2 e to the fifth power at uh, negative 1, comma 2, right? So that's negative, which means it's this one. It's the frowning face. So in the middle of it, it's the relative max that you get, OK? So therefore, the final answer is that uh, answer is uh, fxy e to negative x squared minus y squared minus 2x plus 4y has a relative maximum 
no, relative maximum at negative 1 comma 2 whereas it doesn't have any relative minimum so no relative minimum nor any set or point it just has a single critical point which is which turns out to be a relative maximum